The negative influences that adolescents face can come in many different forms, resulting in the loss of one's innocence in the process. The narrative of a young protagonist growing up and changing can turn awry as they face the more cruel parts of life and fall victim to the repression from the world that their life has succumbed to. Within director Andrea Arnold's Fish Tank and director Thomas Alfredson's Let the Right One In, the societal constraints and issues and cinematic elements enhance the flaws and causes for the character's decision making that will ultimately lead each character to their demise in the coming of age films. Alfredson's Let the Right One In is set in Stockholm, Sweden in 1982, a quiet and peaceful location. Following a young boy by the name of Oscar, this shy character has been met with a young girl of relative age named Ellie. Her mysterious past is not revealed to Oscar as he begins to fall in love with her. Eric Erickson's stages of development play a key role, with Oscar having a strong affiliation and devotion to ideals, causes, and friends. This affection is aimed towards Ellie, which sparks the childlike romance between the two unlikely characters, exploring the negative effects on Oscar with societal issues, cinematography, and bleak lighting. Arnold's fish tank is set in Britain. A young teenage girl named Mia must grow up with a dysfunctional family in a poorer, troubled area. These societal constraints only begin to worsen, as her mother's new boyfriend, Connor, quickly becomes acquainted with Mia, and the two develop into a very risky and inappropriate relationship. This corruption of Mia's innocence is further enhanced with her present social issues, the use of cinematography, and bleak lighting to convey the downfall of her character to the audience. The societal effects of the protagonist, which encompass both the more minor characters associated with Oscar and Mia and the area that they live in, all play a factor in their trust that will lead to each character's loss of innocence. Pertaining to the civilians associated with the protagonist and let the right one in, Oscar goes to school with several bullies who are quite threatening and fear-inducing. Keeping his mischievous thoughts to himself and expressing them in his own time, Ellie catches him stabbing a tree, taking his frustration out on it. This action shows how the people around him have already negatively affected him. Soon growing to really care for Ellie, he begins to listen to her advice on standing up for himself. She wants to be able to protect him and give him advice on how to handle those who mean to inflict harm upon him, but she tells him to do what society tells him not to, which leads to Oscar going down a darker, sinister path. In Fish Tank, Mia must also deal with her own enemies. There are a group of people who instigate arguments and bring out the more violent side of her character too, showing her vulnerability in a society that is mistreating and detrimental to her character. She expresses herself and takes her frustration out through dance, which brings her a state of ceasefire in her ongoing war with herself and everything else. In relieving herself from her anger, she meets the person who will be her negative influence, Connor, similarly to how Oscar meets Ellie in Let the Right One In. Connor's intentions, similarly to Ellie's, are not revealed at first, and his deceptive behavior, being supportive in trying to help however he can with Mia's pursuit of a job regarding dancing, helps to extend her trust to him. The community around both characters, both the city and the more personal people, are bleak and broken, reflecting their own selves. And let the right one in, Oscar's home is a very quiet and remote place. There is no excitement or joy to be evoked in his life, not even his neighborhood that is described as boxy, faceless, historyless complexes. Oscar only lives with his divorced mother. He is insignificant in an unforgiving world, but Ellie is his escape from this isolation. The bleak community was the director's intention to recover that silence from the past. This silence breaks for both the town setting and especially for Oscar. In Fish Tank, Mia's life is surrounded by the notion of a broken Britain. Her anger is fueled by how broken her family is as well. Mia lives with her younger sister and her neglectful mother, who is often physical when confronting either of their two daughters. Being treated disrespectfully and in an abusive manner, Connor connects differently with Mia, as Connor is the first person who talks to Mia as if she were an adult. While this may be as a calming break for her, Connor's continuation to treat her in this adult manner leads to her corruption of innocence. The maturity of both protagonists differ, giving two different representations of love that does not have a positive outcome for the characters. And let the right one in, the relationship between Oscar and Ellie are much more childlike. Their interactions between the pair do not indicate much more than the typical crush that a young prepubescent child may have. Film critic Roger Ebert finds both Ellie and Oscar as two lonely and desperate kids capable of performing dark deeds, allowing the audience to become more empathetic to their monstrous behaviors that come about. Ellie corrupts Oscar as he goes to become more protective and caring of her. Their relationship shows how, unlike the events that take place in both of their lives, there's a gentle and sweet courtship. This leads to Oscar being willing to kill for her, 
beginning to act on his emotions, and turns the other cheek at the violence that Ellie is responsible for, coming to terms with the danger that her being a vampire would place her into. Fish Tank is more rough and explicit. Mia is well into her teens, 15 to be exact, but still not too much older than Oscar. What begins with the same simple crush, such as a delicate web of exchanged looks punctuated by unexpectedly boisterous horseplay, is already a red flag for Connor, a man in his 30s, behavior. He becomes sexually inclined with his interactions with her, eventually leading to him performing intercourse with her, the act that corrupts Mia entirely. Connor's illegal acts cannot be justified. The cinematography enhances and reveals this corruption in both characters, and let the right one in, the cinematography helps add to the audience's ability to empathize with Oscar. The cinematographer, Hoyt Ben Hoytema, frequently uses medium and long shots, with violence often happening far from the position of the camera. Hoytema does not fully show the full brutality that either of the characters are capable of. This conveys how Oscar shields himself from the acts of violence that Ellie commits, turning a blind eye. The camera, once close up, shows the characters for how they see each other, innocent and dependent on one another. For the immense power that Ellie has in her, she tends to be seen at a high angle, at least early on. She is still a child, like Oscar, which the cinematography displays well with her truly being on the same level as him. Fish Tank is determined to convey explicit, raw details. There is the use of handheld camera as a way to convey Mia's rough life using rough cinematography. As director Andrea Arnold states, I want the audience to get a bit more intimately involved with what's going on so that they maybe can experience it a little bit more intensely. Through the entirety of the film, the camera tracks Mia's character. While it may track her through the more happy or calmer moments of Mia's life, this filming style is to not shy away from the more shocking or disturbing parts of her life, especially including Connor's sexual advances towards her. It places the audience at her side at all times, and doesn't just follow Mia around, it attends, encircles, and becomes her. Their relationship is rough and corrupting for her, all of which is captured through the more shakier and restless lens. The end of their relationship also shows Mia's behavioral changes as she acts on impulse for much the remainder of the movie, such as entering Connor's home without permission, vandalizing his floor, as well as putting his own daughter, Kiera, in harm's way. Let the Right One In incorporates the use of light to evoke, but also hide, the violence. Living in a society that has a cold atmosphere to echo Oscar's lonely environment, he finds joy and love in Ellie's character. The film tries to shun away from her acts and focus on antagonizing the harsh society that Oscar has met with instead. To emphasize the negative influence that his community has given him, shadows flood every corner while a gritty, pervasive grayness seems to extend. This makes Ellie's negative influences less demeaning towards her character, as a result, more innocent than Fish Tank's Connor. Fish Tank shows a more natural use of lighting for the more realistic setting that is damaging to Mia's character. The dull, poor city traps Mia and encloses her within, helping to set up the climate of the society she lives in to be more hostile. With the damage that her community and Connor have had on her, the director manages to find glimpses of beauty among the blight in Essex. This helps encounter Mia's loss of innocence by showing her prevail some and growing from it. Mia still retains some ability to follow the conventions of a coming-of-age film with her finding acceptance of the complexities and grayness of the world. Despite all, both characters do not meet the exact standards of staying strong through the harsh, hostile society. Oscar has been influenced entirely by Ellie, and they escape to somewhere that is withheld from the audience. Being young children, their destinies do not look so bright, but their fate looks pleasing only in the moment. Oscar does not prevail and will stay dutiful to protecting Ellie through any violent means. Mia has lost her innocence, and she can no longer tolerate the society around her. She escapes with her friend Billy to Wales. This trip does not seem entirely planned beforehand, which shows how their journey may take a turn for the worse, but that is not revealed to the audience as well. The loss of innocence, including desensitization and acts of violence within two young protagonists who both loved people that they should not have, all while facing external social constraints, is conveyed through the comparing and contrasting qualities between Let the Right Women and Fish Tank. The latter shows the loss of innocence in a more explicit and realistic manner, whereas Let the Right Men In attempts to use childlike innocence between Oscar and Ellie to make their actions more understandable and excusable.